what up youtube so i've been very thankful over the years for all the information that youtube has given me so i'm going to give some back this is my 1973 ford mustang so today's video is going to be about the difference between a 351 cleveland and a 302 windsor so this is a windsor and they can sometimes be very confusing because they are very similar so we're going to look at the first few things here. One, the distributors sit differently in both motors. It's not really a big deal. The easiest way to tell is right here. This is your thermostat housing on the 351 Cleveland. So this goes directly into the block, which means that the intake is dry on 351 Clevelands. So if you look at my Windsor over here, your radiator hose, your top radiator hose goes right in here into your thermostat housing, which is where the intake manifold right here. So this is a wet intake, so coolant flows in through there. So that is the easiest way to tell the difference. The other way to tell the difference is, sorry about the lighting, this is your water pump, and then here is your timing cover. Now this isn't really a cover as it is a like casting because it is pretty thick and it comes off and there's actually a pretty big space between the block and your oil pan. So if you are ever doing a time cover on a Windsor, just always remember to drain the oil after you're done because there's going to be all kinds of gasket material and stuff that gets in your oil pan. So that's just a side note. So that is actually a big casting that comes off of these. If you look at the 351 Cleveland, this is similar to... A Chevy small block, there's a plate that goes over here, like a cover. It's very s slim. It's not like this whole housing like it would be for the Windsor. So that is the easiest way. Look at where the thermostat housing is on the motor, and that will tell you if it's a Windsor or Cleveland. The other way to tell is the infamous Cleveland heads. Now, unfortunately, this is a 2V head. 4V heads are sought after as Back in the day, they were the best flowing heads, okay? Before I get ahead of myself here, if you look at the valves on a Cleveland, they are offset. As you can see, they are not in a straight line, and they are cantered. On a Windsor, they are in a direct straight line. So this motor was actually designed by a fellow who used to work for General Motors and then ended up coming to Ford. This was only produced for five years, so they are getting more and more scarce. So that is the other big telltale sign. You can pop a valve cover, and you can tell if it is a Cleveland or a Windsor. You can also tell if it's a 4V head, because there's a casting number on the side of the head that will say 2V or 4V. The other thing I'm going to quick go over is, this is an open chamber head. Closed chamber heads, there's another stamp in here that will actually close the chamber. That is really good if you're looking to run higher compression. If you run higher compression on open chamber, uh, excuse me, open chamber heads, bad detonation happens, bad things happen to the motor. Okay, four V heads were larger, flowed 275 CFM of air, which back in the 70s was a massive amount of air. So some people will run four V heads. The only other quick thing I'm going to say is. These are boat anchors, these are very heavy. They make a 3V head, which is all aluminum, and that is a cross between the 2V and the 4V head. You can look this all up on the internet, and more educated people can tell you about it. The 4V head really starts making power at 5,600 RPMs. You can watch dyno videos on it. So if you're looking for a streetable car, a 4V head really doesn't do it unless you're going to be racing it the whole entire time you're driving it so you always got to figure out you know what's the rpm range i'm running the car at and you kind of set your car up for that i'm a big fan of aluminum uh because you're saving a lot of weight and there's a thing called weight to horsepower ratio so that makes a big difference so that is a little information on the difference between heads so primarily that is the difference between a windsor and a cleveland there's a few other things but as long as you know those two things, you'll be able to tell the difference. Why did I go with a 351 Cleveland? That is a 1973 block, 
This is a 1973 car. Everyone LS swaps everything today. 460 big blocks or they run the Windsor in it. I want it to be different. So I went with the Cleveland. Um, it was only made for five years or getting rare and it was something different. So on a side note, my next video for my Mustang will be, if you look there and there and over here, those are disc brakes. Fun fact is Cougars were the high-end Ford car back in the day. They're exactly the same as a Mustang. The front ends are different. So if you ever look at a Cougar front end, it is just a little different than the Mustang, obviously. They came fully loaded with electric windows and all that jazz. So you can go on Summit Racing and order a disc brake conversion kit. That'll run you about like almost $1,000. Yes, you can get Brembo and all that fancy stuff. But I'm kind of for building things on a budget. So these will bolt right to that without having to cut or do anything. And you can go to a junkyard, find a 73 Cougar somewhere, and you can take the disc brakes off of it. Obviously, I'm going to replace the calibers the rotors, the pads, the bearings, pretty much everything. I'm just going to use the spindles. I'm also going to rebuild the uh, master cylinder, and I got myself a pedal to go with it, and it was for 200 bucks. So you can save yourself some money, even with buying all new brake hardware. It really, for me, for my opinion, it saves money. So just always keep in mind, you can use a, a you know, a Cougar on your, you know, same period Mustang, and I'll eventually do a video on transmission seals, which is very common on a Mustang. That's an FMX transmission, very similar to a C4. So that'll also be one of my other videos. Um, and we'll do some other odds and ends. So again, I wanted to make this video to give back to how YouTube has gave to me. I'm by no means a master mechanic, but, you know, if I can help someone, then I'm really happy. So until next time, YouTube.